Okay, in our previous video, I brought up a point where I said water is weird. And in that point, I said water is really unique because it can act as either an acid or a base. So let's just write this down as a reminder that water can act as either an acid or a base, All right? Which makes it incredibly unusual, right? And what makes it unusual is this unique feature where it can self-ionize. So I'll show you what this means, but self-ionization basically means it can react with itself. Oops. See if I can spell this right. Self-ionization, there we go. And let's imagine that we have two water molecules floating around in solution like this, right? So I've got water molecule number one, and then over here, I've got water molecule number two. Well, we just said that water can act as either an acid or a base. So let's imagine this one over here can act as an acid, right? So it's going to give up a proton, right? which makes it an acid. And it's gonna give up this proton to the other water molecule. So we can imagine this lone pair here kind of reaching out and grabbing this proton. And then this set of electrons from the covalent bond will just end up getting pushed over onto that oxygen. Okay, well, if this happens, we would get an equilibrium reaction. So I'm gonna use equilibrium arrows and we'll come back and discuss these in more detail. But, this whole group right here will then have a third hydrogen on it, right? Meaning it will now have a positive charge. And that lone pair that I highlighted in yellow will form that new covalent bond to that proton that was just handed off, right? Okay, but let's think about the other group now. Well, this group right here in purple, let me even color code them right here, this group in purple is going to be left with one less hydrogen. However, it's going to have one more lone pair on it, right? Because that bond that I highlighted in green will now reside on the oxygen and that oxygen will have a negative charge, all right? So let's kind of round this all up. The thing that I circled in orange in the beginning took the proton, which means that it's a base, and then if we pair everything up, we can say, well, this and this are related, right? So they're going to be a conjugate pair. And we could define this as our conjugate acid because now it has the proton, right? So anytime you start out with a base, the conjugate must be an acid and vice versa, okay? But let's do the next one. We've got this group over here now. Again, this is going to be a conjugate pair. And over here, it already gave up its proton, so it must be our conjugate base. So this is what's so weird with water. Water will actually steal protons from other water molecules, thereby creating this set of products. We've got the hydronium ion on the left and the hydroxide ion on the right. In fact, let's even name those right here. So this is hydronium ion. That's just H3O plus. And then over here, we've got the hydroxide ion. Which is just OH minus. So the question is, does this occur very much at room temperature? How much hydroxide are we really making with water at room temperature? The answer is very little, right? So water will do this, but not to a very large extent. So let's make a note here. So the note is that the left-hand side of the equilibrium is highly favored. but it is an equilibrium. Meaning we still 
get a little bit of the product shown on the right hand side. In fact, if you go and look at the arrows that I used here, you see how the lower arrow is much bigger and pointing to the left. I often do that to show that the left hand side is favored where the top arrow pointed to the right is little itty bitty indicating not much of it's gonna favor the right hand side. All right, so let's kind of continue on with this point, right? This point that it is an equilibrium, right? Well, we can define the equilibrium using some math terms. So let's go ahead and think about this, right? So we said H2O plus H2O is in equilibrium with H3O plus plus OH minus. Okay, so this was our equation and we could set this up as an equilibrium constant where we want our products on top. So I'd say H3O plus in brackets, that's the concentration of the hydronium ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ion. That's both of our products. We don't need to put anything in the exponent slot because we have no coefficients here, right? So we'll just leave those blank. Okay, and then let's focus on the bottom side. Okay, the starting materials, we have two water molecules. So we could write this a couple different ways. We could just say H2O times H2O, or if we really wanted to, we could take this whole side and just condense it down, right? So we could just change this and say this is the same thing as writing two H2O pluses, right? In which case we can then simplify this, which makes sense mathematically, to H2O squared, right? So the concentration of water squared. All right, so we've got this all kind of taken care of. Okay, but let's kind of manipulate the math a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to that side by multiplying both sides by H2O squared, okay? So we've got K times H2O squared is now gonna be equal to H3O plus, that's our hydronium ion, times our concentration of hydroxide. So these two things right here, they're the same, right? We're just messing around with algebra a little bit. Okay. So now we've got this all taken care of, but water in this case, we said is going to be present at a huge amount. It's really gonna be unchanged during this whole equilibrium. So what chemists do is they basically say, well, this whole thing is basically going to remain static during the entire process, right? And so what they do is they change this into a new constant. And this new constant, they just call KW for water, right? So the W just stands for water. And this is still going to be equal to the hydronium concentration times the hydroxide concentration. All right, so we've just kind of simplified this by saying water is essentially unchanged during this reaction, but we do make a little bit of this and a little bit of this. So we need to kind of keep track of this. All right. So this term right here, Kw, is called the ion product of water. All right, and it's just treated as a constant. So anytime you've got pure water self-ionizing, Kw will be a set value. In fact, we know what that value is experimentally. So at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is going to be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, whoops, moles per liter squared. And you might be wondering, why in the heck are you writing moles per liter squared? We've never seen that unit. Well, it kind of makes sense, right? Because if we think about the units here, it'd be moles per liter. And then we're going to multiply it by another unit where the concentration is in moles per liter. And when all is said and done, this is going to leave you a unit that is moles per liter squared. But it's always going to be equal to 1.0 times 
times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius, which is kind of cool. We can use this in a lot of our math problems, which we'll practice a little later. All right, before we kind of wrap this up, though, there's a few things I wanted to talk about. So we said that Kw is going to be equal to H3O plus times the concentration of hydroxide, right? And we said that this can essentially be plugged in there, assuming we're dealing with a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So let's imagine a few situations. So if the concentration of hydronium ion is equal to the concentration of hydroxide ion in solution, that tells us something. That tells us then the solution is neutral. Right, basically meaning they're bouncing each other. Okay, but let's imagine a situation where they're not even. So let's say we have more hydronium ion. So let's say our concentration of hydronium ion is larger than our concentration of hydroxide ion. Well, we just said that this acts as an acid, right? It's the conjugate acid of the self-ionization of water. So that means that the solution is going to be acidic. Okay, and then we can take a look at the last one. If the concentration of your hydronium ion is less than the concentration of your hydroxide ion, then the solution is basic. All right, so before we leave too, you should be familiar with some common acids and bases inside of your house. And in fact, here's an image from your book. So if we look on the left-hand side here, we've got acidic materials. So things like vinegar or citrus fruits, for example. Citrus fruits have citric acid in them. Or if you've ever done pickling, you add vinegar to it, which is acidic. Things like all of these are considered acidic materials, meaning they have a higher concentration of hydronium ion than hydroxide ion versus on the right hand side we've got basic or alkaline solutions all right so basic and alkaline are basically synonymous in this situation so in this situation we could say well ammonia has a higher concentration of hydroxide ions than hydronium ions same with baking soda, same with things like Drano or borax or milk of magnesia or Tums, things like that. So we encounter these in our day-to-day -day life. Oftentimes we don't think about them, but it is important to classify things as either being neutral solutions, acidic solutions, or basic or alkaline solutions. All right, I hope that helps, but let me know if you have any questions.